What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the Deadpool trailer. We finally see Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine, the classic Wolverine suit. Brian, uh, this is similar to me, Brian, as showing me the Aquaman suit uh, in the trailers and not letting us see something we've been wanting to see for a very long time. And they're just showing it to me. To me, Brian, I just want to see this movie and see what this movie's gonna be and who's gonna be in it. That's it for me. I think you're I think I'm higher on this than you are in general now. I I, I think this trailer is hitting the marks it needs to with the broader audience. I don't know as much if it's hitting the marks for people like you and me. Like I'm not saying it's the best trailer I've ever seen. I tend to agree with you. They probably showed a little too much as it pertains to what we went from seeing no Wolverine to seeing maybe too much Wolverine trailer to trailer. Small sample size. Like I showed my wife the trailer. Couldn't she doesn't follow the genre that closely. And she really liked it. She was like, oh, like that Hugh Jackman's back as Wolverine. She's like, oh, isn't that like, and then she knew enough to be like, well, isn't that how he, isn't that Wolverine's costume? Like she kind of knew that was Wolverine's costume. So she's like, oh, that looks really good. Like Ryan Reynolds is really funny. Like, so that's what I mean. I wonder if the broader audience, which is the one they need to get this thing to 800, 900 million is really vibing with this. And maybe some of the hardcore crowd is kind of like a little more, I don't know. The hardcore crowd is, I think, is still there for this, right? Oh, I think they'll show up opening weekend. I'll, I'll show up opening weekend. I just, yeah, I don't know. You, I think you've kind of felt pretty down on both trailers as far as like getting you excited for the movie. My curiosity is there, and I agree with you that uh, they've done a good job of teasing what what could be going on here. We're dealing with a Wolverine that has failed his universe or i mean or his earth or his multiverse or whatever because it's like it's hard to get it straight these days we get to find out what happened right or we get to sort of hear his story and what he has to do to redeem himself or because this he's done here most likely he'll he'll perhaps continue in uh secret wars brian to the end of this i don't know i just want to see the beginning of a new mcu and this is the beginning of the end. I think there's also, you know, we didn't mention this in the in the X-Men 97 recap, but I, I wanted to bring it up here because I think there's actually a connecting, a tie-in between the two, which I don't think is an accident. So X-Men 97 episode eight makes a reference to the idea of an absolute point in oh, the timeline. Yes. There's a yes, lot yes, of rumors yes. that this- Strange. Movie, there's, there's a lot of rumors that this movie with its TVA involvement also centers on the concept of absolute points in the timeline, which is how, which is how and why they are bringing together the Fox X verse led by Wolverine to, to matter to whatever it is they're trying to do. So I continue to maintain that some of the Easter eggs you're seeing in animated form in X-Men 97 are not there by chance. They're not, there just because of the freedom of the writers of that show. They're there in conjunction with what Kevin Feige wants to do with the remains of this multiversal story. And I think that's going to be carried forward. And you do see references to it in this second trailer, like whatever they're jumping into, like whatever they're talking about and whatever they're talking about with like, there's no real obvious comic parallel to what the brief shot they show of, of this Wolverine kind of in despair. Cause it's not from the Logan verse. It's from another one. Um, but I think, there's something going on with this idea of these convergence points that like all the universes share. And they're going to kind of use that as the fulcrum to destroy the MCU effectively and, and re, you know, reboot it. Interesting. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that, of that theory. Brian believes what could be happening and what they are attempting to do. It makes sense because you certainly get a hint of that in the Marvels, right? At the end of that. Uh, so. And like, I also go back to, there's a lot of rumors that Kevin Feige was like this close, super close to actually making X-Men 97 true canon to the MCU process. And the fact that that conversation got to the five yard line makes me think that there's, there's real content and tie in 
laced into that show that is somehow going to be used, even if it's not ultimately considered canon, they're going to use elements of that in, in the live action elsewhere in the universe elsewhere. It's applicable. Yeah. So the, the one thing though, that I would say watching this trailer and to your point, I'm not feeling better about the jokes. <laughs> they're fine in the trailer. Man, there's a lot of variety. They are using up a lot of bullets in two trailers. A lot of bullets in two trailers. A lot of like it would be disappointing if that money money jokes are being used. I think in this trailer, if they don't replace them or have updates for them, you know what I hate about when I go to these movies and 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 you go to the theaters and people start laughing and people laugh out loud as if they've heard it for the first time. And it's like, did you really hear this for the first time? Or are you laughing out loud? I don't know. But it's just like, ugh, you know, it's like I've heard these jokes over and over again in the trailers. I hope I don't hear them in the movies. And you hear them in the movies and it doesn't hit the same. And it's weird to me that people still find a chuckle out of it. Again, Brian, they've done a good job of just taking it. I wouldn't be surprised, Brian, if the next set of trailers they sh- start showing you possible cameos bro there, no, what are there's your a thought? few in this one people have spotted, okay people have spotted like lady like kelly who's lady death strike is oh yeah yeah yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. first class pops up yes think, yes, we know yes pyro yes, yes. was very briefly in the original one ant-man so, yeah the ant-man helmet like we don't know what that is but like there, there's now been a few sightings so the other thing that i wanted to link in here and it's something that goes back to our action movie discussion um, is you get a little more look at some of the fight choreography in this. And nothing, there's nothing wrong with it per se, but it kind of looks like what we've seen. It's kind of like the spirit of what we've seen before. I don't know if I'm wrong about that, but I didn't really feel like I saw groundbreaking new action just because Wolverine was there. And I had a chance to see the fall guy um, a couple of days ago, Ah. Mm -hmm. which is quite enjoyable, entertaining, very light, fair. But that movie is very deliberately that kind of action that we've talked about, like overly stylized. They're in on the joke. The, the, The whole point of that movie, honestly, is to honor stunt people. Like that's really the point of the movie. So of course they're going to, they're literally setting up these like big set piece stunts to show off the capabilities of the stunt people. But in doing so, it's like kind of wink, wink a lot of it. And like, you've got Ryan Gosling, who's red hot, Emily Blunt, who's pretty, got a pretty good following. You've got really good critical reviews. And that movie is sucking wind at the box office. So, I'm not look. I think Deadpool is going to be fine as far as getting to the levels of box that the first two did. That 700, 750. But if, do, you, do you think it gets to a billion? I do not. Most people are guaranteeing. I do not. I do not. Okay. I'm below. You get, so you you say okay? I think okay. it's above the first two, but below a billion dollars. That's my. I think it what looked, was the second one? Because I know the first, first one, one is made... like seven twenty. The second one's like seven eighty. But you know, you're not going to get any China participation, right? So, like the second one made almost fifty million dollars in China. So right there, you just wipe that out. It's not that's not going to be there. Um, and like I said, I just have this little thing in my mind where like this type of action, and we saw it, you know, in a bad way in Argyle. It's in it's in Fall Guy in a pretty good way, quite honestly. It's that's about as well as you're gonna see it done. It's like a movie directed by a stunt man, like with stunt people, with big stars, and nobody went to see it opening weekend when there was no competition at the start of the summer. I'm just saying, like, I don't think it applies because I think Ryan Reynolds is he's been hot, right? Everything he's touched has been great. It's gonna be a big summer for him. I think this if could do pretty well in, in addition. But if it doesn't reach the Joker break the record for R-rated movie box office heights. I wonder if it's because audiences are just so over this type of action, even if it is done by Deadpool and Wolverine and a bunch of X-Men, that they're just like, I want to see something else. And until I see something else, I'm not interested. So I'm kind of in that like 850, kind of Guardians 3 
level of box, which is still awesome for an R-rated movie. It wouldn't be a massive profit margin because so the budget for the first Deadpool was fifty eight million dollars, right? They made seven twenty. Yeah, 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 that'll work. <laughs> the second one, the second one actually amazing. It's a, it's more. It's like ninety million dollars, but they made like seven eighty. Seven hundred, yeah. So this one, the box, the budget's like two fifty, and when you yeah. throw in marketing, it's going to be like three fifty, maybe even more. So. 850 when your cost is 350 is mm, you're kind of break even to a little better than break even like you're not doing awesome so i don't know that this movie is going to be awesomely profitable it's not gonna be a bust but i don't think it's i don't know that it's gonna it's not gonna be barbie it's not gonna be super mario brothers like i don't think it's going there i mean i guess this brian is supposed to be the jump off point this will be the um the one that will have to brian in with regards to the next iter not this iteration but the next movie that comes after this has to have because this is the beginning of something that will lead lead to an end then hopefully to a new beginning so this should be the i guess the bar brian that they have to exceed every time out until they read secret wars and what this new beginning will look like and how it will begin. True. But I think the parallel from a performance perspective is really more guardians three. It's more like, here's something familiar that we like. Here's a, here's a lead couple of lead actors that we generally trust. And it's a big deal in a summer where there aren't a lot of massive tentpole pictures like guaranteed successes. So it's going to do fine. That to me is like, that's why it landed like 850. But I'm just not convinced it's going to one, two, one, three, and that, that type, those type of numbers. Like, I actually, I'd be interested to see like what, if you lay betting odds between this and, and between this movie and Despicable Me 4 as biggest box office hit of the summer. Like, I probably would say Despicable Me 4 is a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's five tickets right there. Easy. You know? And I will be taking my, my, my kids to see that. So Deadpool is only going to be me and my son, maybe. So, yeah. I don't know. But uh, anything else, Brian, before we wrap this one up? I think, like I said, I think the trailer is checking the boxes. I don't know that the trailer is like a 12 out of 10. That's kind of what I'm feeling with the promotion so far. Like everything I would have expected from Ryan Reynolds is happening. Everything I would have expected from Hugh Jackman is happening. This film is just like I said, you just make make the list. Like, is it doing what you expected? Yes. Does it look the way you expected? Yes. Is it going to be a hit? Yes. Is it going to be a transcendent mega hit? I still don't see. I don't see that yet. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Deadpool trailer. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that are very excited for this film, and I'm sure... And I see the reasons for it, Brian. Um, yeah, my, uh, my only worry is goofiness. That's it. Um, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!